Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. I'm back today then with another Spotlight video. And again today, it's Batman the movie for the Atari ST, which was obviously a movie tie-in of the film of the same name. Obviously a much hyped film, I remember it coming out in the cinema, I'm going to see it at least a couple of times. It was the most expensive film made at the time, obviously based on a franchise that had been going on for flipping years. But yeah, I distinctly remember the film because of its effects, it was absolutely amazing. At the same time, I really look forward to the game coming out. I played the Spectrum version first sometime in about, I don't know, June, July time maybe. can't exactly remember, but I know it came out before the 16-bit variants. And it was the Atari ST I had at the back end of 89, so that's the version I bought. But I was really looking forward to the driving sequences, which, were, which looked absolutely fantastic because the Spectrum well, and the Commodore 64 and Amstrad versions didn't have the same driving sequences. They were more sort of a horizontal driving game as opposed to actually a proper, looked like an arcade racer, didn't it? But the game came out in a really nice, cute box on the Spectrum. And if I show you in comparison, the ST version was slightly bigger. So yeah, so I obviously played it on the Spectrum, then the ST version came out and it was fantastic. The game was developed in-house Ocean Software, it was programmed by Mike Lamb, Alan Schult and John O'Brien. Graphics were done by Dawn Drake, Bill Harbison and John Palmer. And the music was done by Matthew Cannon and Jonathan Dunn. So yeah, very familiar sort of names in association with Ocean Software on obviously games that are made in-house. But yeah, so the box itself then was quite plain. But pretty effective though, didn't it? First time obviously Ocean used the gold logo, which they used again in the Untouchables, which was released that year. I'm pretty sure they used it again in F29 Retaliator. But yeah, the back of the box just had the screenshots. I'm assuming they're straight from the Atari ST, Stroke Amiga versions. But not really much to describe really for the box, apart from the fact it uh, looks bloody awesome. Now, I remember walking to school and walking past bus stops which had humongous posters of like the bat sign. I think underneath it just had like the release date of the film. But those bus stops have been smashed to bits because people have got the A1 sized posters out of them and obviously took them home or sold them on or whatever they did. So yeah, only, very rarely ever saw the posters because yeah, they had been bloody nicked. You now inside the box then you've got a bat sticker, which I think came with all the releases of Ocean, uh, Batman the movie, sorry. But yeah, I can't remember what I did to my original. Inside the box then you've got a baggie, a couple of discs and a pamphlet. That's quite common to have instruction pamphlets which just opened up into massive posters. Well that's not actually massive is it? It's not particularly large but you sort of get the gist of it I guess. But yeah, that's it. So the box is quite plain to be honest. Now you can pick the game up really cheap. A couple of quid on the ST. It's amazing really. It was the Amiga one might sit you back between five and ten quid and the Spectrum one again is a couple of quid. So if you fancy playing a game on any format it's really cheap and good value for money. I mean back then it was about, I think it was even 19.99 on the ST and 24.99 on the Amiga, I think. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So when I got hold of the game anyway, it was a bloody, bloody, bloody fantastic experience. Right, that's it, let's get over to the game. Right then, so welcome to Batman the Movie, a game that was most anticipated by myself in 1989, as I've already described. Now, when you load the game up for the first time, you are greeted with what sounds like a really bad version of the Sinclair Spectrum title tune. A bit disappointing, because when I put it on, obviously I had the Spectrum version, I put this on, I thought, what the hell is this flipping racket? It's just got no atmosphere compared to the Spectrum version, even though the sound chips are exactly the same. So yeah, the, the title screen is quite nice. It's quite well drawn and nice and gold and black. So let's crack on with the game anyway. It's one of those games that's got a bit of, uh, well, follows the same sort of theme as most ocean film tie-ins. You've got multi multiple levels, kind of follows the plot of the film. And it's got, I think, one, I think it's just the one subsection, which can be a bit of hit, hit or miss, really. Right, let's crack on. Now one thing the ST did benefit from, because it was released on more discs, because of the reduced 
this capacity had those really nice intermittent um, oops intermittent graphics which the Amiga version didn't have not doing very well I used to be able to beat this game with my eyes shut back in the day I've beaten the Amiga version recently but I can't remember the layout of the last level but anyway we'll see what we can do uh, not very well but yeah the, the Amiga version looks identical to this I think the only real difference between the two oh come on ah oh, really is the border if you notice the ST's got quite a large border around the main the main the main game area obviously the heads up display you've got the high score your current score your lives on the right hand side there but in the middle you can start to see the Joker's face appearing it's because I'm flipping halfway through losing a life the time limits are quite generous and the only, only weapon you actually have really is the uh, boomerang which is quite effective there's a few hazards as you go along one is that obviously pipe leaking acid a few drips Sort of pretty much the same throughout the level to be completely honest with you. Spectrum version is laid out exactly the same as the 16 bits. No different whatsoever. The other thing you'll notice between the uh, ST and Amiga versions is there's probably more colour on screen. So some of the enemies are a different colour. But you've just got an orange. Oh, come on. Just got an orange baddie and a green one. I think the Amiga version's got a slightly different colour for a different kind of baddie. I think some of the pipes are a different colour as well as the colours that the ST displays. But in terms of gameplay it's silky smooth just like its Amiga counterpart and plays exactly the same. So a very good conversion on the ST. Obviously the biggest difference is the sound and music. Some levels have got exactly the same tune but it just sounds far more superior uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I really can't remember. Hang on. Probably got to be the poorest start I've made on this level ever. Ah! If you push down a button, you just jump down. You push up and button, then your battering comes out, and up you go. The enemy come at you exactly the same way every single time. So once you've kind of mastered that, it's quite straightforward. Yeah, the game consists of five levels. Not sure I just said that or not. A couple of levels are just like this. A couple of levels are driving sequences. That was lucky, Paul. That was not lucky. Let's keep moving. Have it. Oh. Bloody hell, I'm not doing well at all here. You can knock them off the platform using the battering. I'm almost dead. You can duck, but you can't dive. I think there's checkpoints. Yeah, there is checkpoints. I should go back to first checkpoint in a minute I usually follow their little feet at the top there so at least when I get up there they're walking the other way it's not a foot, a foot fetish it's just um, yeah one way of avoiding those little gits because it can be a pain in the ass but yeah graphics are really nice Quite similar really to, oh dead already, quite similar really to uh, Robocop 2 which came out a year later. Probably designed by the same in-house team. Yeah the ST version was quite well received if I remember rightly, in fact both 16-bit versions were. And it's mostly because of the driving sequences. But these are quite mundane platform levels to be honest. Personally, it's just a very, very nostalgic game from a very nostalgic period. I'm not quite sure where the hell I am in a minute. I 
Right, let's clear them off. Let's keep going. Not one of those games I keep coming back to years and years later. I, I do enjoy it, to be honest. It's quite quick to get through. Maybe half an hour. If I last that long. Oops, a bit too late. Whoa. And again. Try now. Oh, for God's sake. Whatever. Whatever. Problem is they keep dropping those bloody grenades even if they're not on the screen anymore. Well, yeah, graphically it is quite repetitive. <sighs> I usually can get off this level with one without losing a life. <clears throat> but not today. I would say the game's full of action. Are quite some quite quiet moments within it. Clearly, he's not coming back. Oh! Oopsie Daisy! Come on! It's the way. That's the way. Getting the hang of it again now. This takes a little bit of time. Get here, son. Oh, missed him again. I'm not having much luck with this bloody battering, am I? We do get extra lives. I can't remember if it's 100,000 or what. We do get them. Just up here should be the Joker. Oh, come on, sunshine. Here you go. Straight into the acid. A nice intermission screenshot will come up in a minute. A nice little caption from the film. Those toys, where does he get those wonderful toys? Now this level was absolutely amazing. This is exactly what Chase HQ should have been like. So have to excuse the bad music, but it's very rarely I can make this level in one life, even today. If you drive carefully, you will run out of time. I remember seeing this on like a cinema sized screen at the computer show in Elves Court in 1989. It looked absolutely amazing. Amazing, I'll tell you what. And that was like, I don't know, July time? It took like three or four months to like sweat it out before the game got released. But yeah, amazing, amazing, um, amazing graphics and amazing sense of speed as well. Bearing in mind what was out before this game, really. There wasn't really anything this would be compared to, to be honest. Because even Outrun on the ST was dire. I don't think it was until Lotus S3 came out, the year after, that I saw anything rival this again. It's even parallax scrolling in the background. Tone you do not associate normally with the Atari ST. 
I said the only real difference between this and the Amiga on this level is the additional colours in the skyline. The gradient's a lot, lot more subtle. That's about it. There's a checkpoint about... Um, yeah, when the distance meter gets to about 50. On the top right-hand corner there. You've got three attempts to make the turn as well. After that, you'll end up in a police blockade. Or crash into a police blockade, I should say. Level does require some... Um, Concentration levels. Not giving it the respect it deserves at the minute. But not doing too bad either. There's another sort of driving sequence to come up. But it doesn't involve the Batmobile. It's still stunning really how fast the scenery moves towards you. This is where the 8 bits and 16 bit versions really diverge. This was never ever going to be possible. Well, actually, it might have been possible on the Spectrum or the other 8 bit machines. Bear in mind what Chase HQ looked like in the end. I'm pretty sure this part of the ST and the Amiga version was actually developed by the same team who brought us, who brought us Chase HQ on the Spectrum. Which makes it even more sad, really. I guess for Ocean, this was their big money maker for that year, based on the fact that film was gigantic. Made lots of money, didn't it? I suppose the fact that Robocop done so well previously is probably why they put all their eggs into the Batman, Batman basket. Do you think the other big releases that year from Ocean Software were done by third party developers? The Untouchables and Chase HQ, Thunderbolt. Well, actually, I actually think Thunderbolt was done internally. That turned out really well. The problem is, if you do manage to complete the game right the way through with one life, or this level, I should say, the time limit is like, well, you've got to be really accurate. Like at the minute, I've got 50 seconds. I'd be surprised if I make it. If you do crash and do die, you've got an extra bit of time to play with. If I make it, it'll be the first time I've done it for come on! It'll be the first time I've done it for a long time. Can you do it? If England can win on penalties, I'm sure I can do it. You can do it. Oh, yes. So, the life I would normally lose on this level makes up for the life I lost on the first level. Right in the back cave, this is the level I'm crap at. One. Oh, bloody hell. So it's not that, is it? Shaven foam. Help! Lipstick, toothpaste. Oh yes, pure jam. And an extra life. <coughs> right, the next driving sequence is due. Another fantastic intermittent screen. He stole my balloons. Right, let's go. Now this level is quite tricky because so you've got to find like the perfect speed if you like. Go too fast, you'll miss loads of balloons, pop them all. Go too slow, you're going to run out of time. Just got to try and work out the undulations in the road, cut the balloons. That's pretty much it. I'll do that a hundred times. Obviously, if you miss one, you lose a bit of energy. If you pop a balloon, you also lose a bit of energy. 
Again, the only significant difference between this and the Amiga version is the fact the Amiga version's got more colour. Again, there's a checkpoint halfway through each level. Or this level, I should say. I've got a feeling they are. Oh, I was going to say the Amiga's got a different variety of balloons, but I just saw one there. Back in the day though, this was an absolutely like a treat to see the graphics like this and then the speed of it as well. Never quite witnessed anything like this before, personally, I, I sort of owning the Spectrum beforehand. So 1989 was quite a treat really for me for games because they were completely, some of them were massive upgrades on what had come out before on the Spectrum. Not doing too bad. Shame about the music, eh? Got a minute and a half to knock 46 blooms out. Is that even possible? No, what are you doing, you Wally? It's probably only doing about half the speed he can do. Fifty-eight seconds to go. Got to knock a balloon out every two seconds at the minute. Which ain't easy. It's a nice little touch so when you start to sort of get right well really low in energy, so tips of your bat wings start to catch fire. I'm not sure if you burst a balloon actually, it counts as releasing one. I haven't really noticed. Oops, I'm on fire, come on, you can do it, 19 seconds, shit. Four left. Three, two, boost the speed up, come on! Before I just show you that, it's, yeah, it's quite quick. Right, now onto the last level. Now, the problem with this level is I can't remember where to flipping out to go. Probably features the best tune in the entire game on the ST. Piss off. Now this level now the cathedral um, obviously ties in with the film, but there's quite quite a lot of different traps to avoid as well. What the flipping are you doing? Where did they all come from? Oh shit! Come on! They got flipping open hell. Die! I hate this level. They appear now, watch, little bastard. Whoa! What am I supposed to flipping do there? Right, concentrate, Paul. Oh. Extra life, that's good. So every hundred thousand, you must get an extra life. A bit better. What the flipping hell? Right, I'm not sure where the traps are here. To be completely honest with you, I 
do you swing here? I can't remember. That's the thing, I can't remember what to do. I love the music. No, I don't think that's the, the case. What the crap does one do? Maybe this is the right way, who knows? Yeah, it's a pain in the arse because the enemy do turn up when you think you've cleared them all. That can be a pain. You forget that they're behind you. Oh yeah, there's rats in the kitchen here, be careful. Pit, Ooh, that's lucky. No! I think there might be alternative ways to get up through this level. I can't remember. I don't remember going this way before. Yeah, I think there's shorter but more dangerous ways and ways which are a little bit easier. Let's just try and get to the halfway mark. That might be quite helpful. The stairs of doom. Yeah, I think they come down. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. It's funny because I should remember because it plays just like the Amiga version, and I've completed that in the last six months. But there's no limit to how many battle rings you can chuck either. Again, the right way, I ain't got a flipping clue. Ah, it's alright, I'd like it. Whoa, he did! No! Bastard! Ah, oh, come on! I suppose you can see how this game could be short lived, though. So the first and, fir first and fifth levels are exactly the same, more or less, and the second and fourth far. There's not really a lot of variety in the game. Run! I love it when they come down the stairs as you're going up them. That really pisses you off. I'm pretty sure there's more than one route you can take. I don't even think I'm halfway yet. Oh, you yeah, fuckers. He deserved to die. Right, I'm not sure if this has got a collapsing platform. Quite a flipping lucky, wasn't it? You fucker. Right, this must, I think this is halfway here actually. Your jam. Oh! oh God, I hate them bloody people. <laughs> yeah, 
you little shithead. Duck and cover. Not doing bad though. Not doing bad at all. Don't say so myself. Come on, come on, come on. Lucky. You're not doing too bad. I don't think I'll make it though. With one life, because it gets a bit tricky. Oh, bloody hell. Gets a bit tricky in a minute. If you ever tried walking down the ladder like that, bloody hell. Makes you feel sick. Come on! No! Oh, you bastard. You bastard. Don't you dare. You can have it, sunshine. <clears throat> oh, no, no. <laughs> well, I did try. Right, let's try it. We've got two lives. You should be able to make this. Should be able to make this. Good luck, Batman. Oh, flip's sake. think for a minute should I take the other route but I'll go this way the road less traveled <laughs> yeah you got a generous time limit on this level something like about 15 minutes I think Let's try and avoid the prats up there this time. Oh, come on, Batman. Ha, <laughs> straight in the face. Full of twinkle toes up there. Ah, oh, where'd you come from? Right, bit of swingy, swingy. Oh, for fuck's sake! Can be a bit crafty, as you think you're safe. That was bloody lucky, though. Duck and cover. Down you go. <clears throat> now this bit's quite brutal, if I remember rightly. <sighs> ah, bloody hell. Trying to catch the side of that bloody uh, brickwork there. You'd be on the floor. You have got plenty of time though to take your time if you have to. Do shit like that. Does your friggin' eyes in though, the scrolling does a little bit, doesn't it? Right. Drop off. Near the top. Oh, it is the top. Can we do it? That bloody gargoyle. Just fire any bloody direction. Come on! Oh yes! You bloody green haired twat! A! 
excellent. That's the first time beating the ST version for quite some time. Oh yeah. I'm not sure if there's speech. Maybe not. That was it. That is Batman the movie. Not a bad game. Just write the old name in and then we'll conclude. Awesome. Well, just to conclude then, Batman the movie was a fantastic game for its day. The driving sequences, well I've never seen driving sequences like that before on a home computer. And playing the Spectrum game previously, because I had it a few months beforehand, the SD version was amazing. But to play nowadays, it's a quite a bland game with very simple game mechanics and you'll get bored really quick. But the only reason it's really in my collection is because it's nostalgic. And I can play it and beat it. But no, I don't often put it on, to be honest, um, because it's not, like I said, it's not really an exciting game to play. Um, but yeah, it's not really much else to summarise really for Batman. It's quite a cheap game to pick up. But yeah, so thank you very much for subscribing, and thank you for continuing to subscribe and watch my content. So I'll see you again real soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.